In this video, we're going to talk about the IBCS standards and how you can use it to communicate your insights in a better way. We're going to talk about my key takeaways from this document and also how you can implement it in your Power BI reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So creating and customizing reports in Power BI is great as it gives you a lot of options to work with in terms of how to design your reports and how to organize them. This freedom of customization can also be intimidating because it means how you design your reports, where your charts go, where your tables go, and how they interact with each other is totally up to you. And in fact, I've covered several tips on how to design your reports and general best practices in the previous videos. But I feel like with many good processes, there had to be some sort of industry standard guidebook that I could follow so I don't have to reinvent the wheel and instead piggyback on what professionals recommend. This is how I got introduced to the IBCS standards. IBCS stands for International Business Communications Standards, and it's a collection of suggestions for how to create consistent design, layout, and presentation of reports, which focuses less on the pretty charts and colorful dashboards, and more towards compact design, concise, and meaningful insights. The standards is platform independent, so regardless if you're using Power BI, Excel, or other reporting tools, you can apply some, if not all of the aspects of the standards. It's run by the IBCS Association, which is a not-for-profit organization. And with the help of sponsors and contributors, it continues to add more and improve the standards itself. And you can get a copy of the standards for free if you sign up to be a member, which is also free. And by the way, just full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I found them through a company called Zebra BI. And as I read through the standards, I thought it contained a lot of really good suggestions. So I thought I'd cover them in a video. The PDF is about 168 pages long and makes for a good read. So I highly suggest you check it out. And if you don't want to, here are some of my key takeaways from it. First is to unify your message. This means that if you're using terminologies like headcount, attrition, or other business terms, it should be the same across the different reports that you provide to help your users quickly understand what you're trying to say. This extends to abbreviations that you use. This means that any longhand terms, shorthand terms, even abbreviations should be the same and if possible, compiled in a glossary to help guide your users if they need to reference these in the future. Other terms like how you show your dates, currency units can also be standardized. So instead of showing for example, 1,932 pounds, you can instead show 1.9K if your audience doesn't need high precision of data. This unification also extends to the visuals and how you present your data. So things like titles and subtitles should be on the top left. Data labels should be next to your bar charts. The type of fill you should have depending on what you're conveying, so like black fill if it's actual, hatched if it's forecast, and white if it's planned. There are a ton more here that I skipped, and to be honest, some of them are really specific. But the key takeaway from this section is to follow the rules that you apply on all your visuals. That way, when your users see your reports, they will find what they need a lot quicker. They know, for example, that they will see the titles and descriptions of your visuals on the top left, which bar chart shows actual values and so on and so on. The next one is to always try to show comparisons. Showing data as it is may look good, but what does it really tell you? You can show, for example, the number of sales that you made this month, but by itself, it doesn't really tell you anything. How does it compare to the previous month? 
how does it compare to our forecasts, or maybe how does it compare against our competitors. These help contextualize the data and help discover insights far better than just the current single dimension values. It tells you far more information in a single visual, which saves space for other insights that you could have in this page. So using chart types like bar charts, waterfalls, area and line charts, even tables are the staples of IBCS. It emphasizes a lot on using the right charts for the type of analysis you're doing, but it also recommends not to use chart types like pie charts, ring charts, and gauges as they're usually just showing data in one dimension and it takes too much space for the info that they're giving. The last key takeaway that I got is to maximize the insights that you have per page. This is related to the abbreviations we covered earlier, which allows you to fit more labels in a visual without cluttering it too much. It also talks about avoiding redundancies and reducing clutter by using data labels instead of both the axis and data labels, avoiding axis titles if you're already explaining what the visual is doing on the title. Maximizing the space you have also extends to the page itself. So it recommends to, instead of having things like logos, footers, for example, which takes up too much space, it's best to keep them at a minimum in order to fit in as many insights as you can in a page. And that's really it for my key takeaways. There are so many topics that I glossed over, so I really recommend that you read the standards documentation. The current version 1.2 is 168 pages, which sounds long, but it's mostly images, so it's a pretty easy one to read. So the IBCS standards, after you've read it, you'll notice that it has a lot of strict rules in terms of how to present your data. However, how does it fare with Power BI? Power BI provides a lot of customization options, but not to the full extent of what the document recommends. So for example, simple things like having hatched fill for forecasted bars in a chart is not available from the out of the box visuals in Power BI. This means that without using custom visuals, the best you can take from this document is to adapt certain elements and ensure that you're following your own standards for your reports. Because in the end, it's all about the standardization of insights and making it easier and quicker for your users to get what they need out of your reports. However, if you're looking to create reports that are fully IBCS compliant, Zebra BI has a great custom visual that you can use, which does exactly this. They have a tiered plan with a free option if you'd like to see what it's all about. So that's an option available to you if you want to create reports that follow the IBCS standards to a T. And that's really it for this video. I hope I've convinced you to check out the IBCS standards, which I found to be a really interesting read and will help you in the long run if you're a report developer. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.